All right, let's talk for a second about orthogonal complements. So I like it when people compliment like my eyes or they say that they like my YouTube channel. But when someone gives me an orthogonal compliment, then, oh yeah, that is the best kind of compliment you can get. Uh, so that's my joke for the video. So let's, thank you for tuning in. Let's, let's do some math instead. Uh, what is an orthogonal complement? Well, first let's define a subspace W. And let's say the subspace W contains all vectors on the line y equals one half x. Okay, so we have the subspace, which is the collection of all vectors on the line y equals one half x. So let's go ahead and, and draw that. Let's get a geometric interpretation of this stuff. So it looks something like this, right there, with a slope of one half. So this is actually just w. And now the question is, what is the orthogonal complement of w? Well, you could call it the orthogonal complement of w, but if you're a cool kid, then you just say w perp. And w perp is denoted like this, right? It's kind of, don't confuse this with the transpose sign, like a capital T in the superscript position. It's in the superscript position and it's uh, like the perpendicular sign. And so this here, w perp, we call it w perp for perpendicular, the cool kids do. But all it is, is it's the orthogonal complement of w. And what does that mean? It means it's, a, it's another subspace which contains all the vectors that are orthogonal to the vectors in W. So this, so, so geometrically, what does that look like? Well, you have W and it contains like this vector and this vector and this vector and so on and so forth. And what would be the collection of all vectors orthogonal to all these vectors in W? Wouldn't it be the line that's orthogonal to the line Y equals one half X like this? It would, right? Because any vector on this line, like this vector, this vector, this vector, those vectors are orthogonal to all the vectors in W, right? These lines are perpendicular. So this first line I drew was W. The second line I drew was W perp, okay? So W perp is um, all the vectors orthogonal to the vectors in W. And if you remember from your algebra class in high school, the slope of this line uh, is the opposite reciprocal slope of the slope of the subspace W. So this would be the line y equals negative 2x. Okay, let's do another example of geometrically interpreting ge uh, these orthogonal complements. Now let's do it in three dimensions. So let's say you have this plane. This is my favorite picture ever. I think it's so cool. Let's call this plane W. Okay, this... So now we have a two-dimensional subspace, and we're calling it W. And here's the origin of this three-dimensional world. And uh, if I draw a line that pierces this plane, that pierces this plane uh, at a right angle, okay, then this line is actually W perp. And why is that? Well, consider all the vectors that you can you can draw in W. So these are all vectors in that plane W. Any vector on this line that pierces the plane at a right angle, like this guy, is going to be orthogonal to any vector in W. And so therefore, this line here is W perp. Interestingly, if you switch it up and you first call this line going straight up and down in three-dimensional space, if you call this line W, then what would W perp be? W perp would be the plane that it pierces at a right angle. Okay, so then this plane would be W perp. So, time for some theorems. W perp perp equals W. And that should make some sense. If we just consider this plane here, W, W perp is the line that pierces it. But if you take the orthogonal complement of this line, you get back to W, right? So W perp perp is just W. Same thing over here or let's do the two-dimensional case. This line W, the orthogonal complement of it is W perp, and then you take the orthogonal complement of this line, you get back to your original W. So W perp perp is W. Sounds like a Kanye West song, whatever. Um, the next theorem, if W is in R, N, okay, 
then the dimension of W plus the dimension of W perp equals N. And this should also make some sense, like based on the examples we did. So here, our subspace W was in R3, right? I told you this is in like a three-dimensional world. The dimension of W is a plane, so that's 2. Plus the dimension of W perp, it was just a line. So 2 plus 1 is 3. And then up here, we have W. Now we're confined to a world that's two-dimensional. And so the subspace W is in R2. So the dimension of W plus the dimension of W perp should equal 2. And it does, because they're both lines. So those are the two theorems that you need to know. Um, now let's do a quick example. All right, we have the subspace W defined to be all the vectors on the plane x minus 3y plus c equals 0. And then the problem is asking us to find a basis for W perp. Well, to find a basis for W perp, first we've got to have a basis for W. And I haven't told you the exact process for finding a basis for W perp. Just trust me on this. First, you've got to find a basis for W. And how do we do that given this plane equation? Well, if we isolate X, we get X equals 3Y minus Z. And then Y. And so then that's, that's our only constraint is X has to equal 3Y minus Z. So Y can be anything. So we'll say Y equals Y. And Z can be anything too. Z equals Z. And so then we can write a general vector x, which is in this plane. Or we could write it, actually, we should probably do v, maybe, I don't really know. v, which is going to be a vector in this plane, takes the form y times 3, 1, 0, plus z times negative 1, 0, 1. And there we go. Here are our two basis vectors. So a basis for W is given by the set of these two vectors. So we have our basis for W, and now we just got to find a basis for W perp. So W perp is all the vectors that are orthogonal to the vectors in W. This kind of resembles what we did in the previous video. If you remember in the previous video, uh, the, the question was, it gave us two vectors and it said, find all the vectors orthogonal to these two vectors. And that's the same thing we're doing. If we can find... Um, all the vectors orthogonal to these two basis vectors, it's going to be, those vectors are going to be orthogonal to any linear combination of these two vectors too. And so we're going to have that, that collection of vectors, which is orthogonal to these two, is W perp. And so if you remember how we did that, we put those vectors that we're trying to find all the vectors orthogonal to, we put those these two vectors, we squished them together and we put them, we took the transpose of them and we put them as the rows of a matrix and we found the null space. So W perp is equal to the null space, the null space of the matrix that has these two basis vectors as the rows. So 3, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. Okay, I'm skipping a lot of like proofs and like why if you're orthogonal to both of these are you orthogonal to any linear combination? Well, it's because you can like distribute the dot product and then you can simply like you can go through this and prove it to yourselves. You can look at the lecture slides. Um, I'm just trying to like for like a TLDR if you're cramming for an exam or something. I'm just giving you the, the recipe like the process. Okay, so we got to find so W perp is the null space of the matrix that has its rows as the basis vectors for W. So this is this works every time, right? So W perp is the null space of this. So we want to find a basis for W perp. And so all that amounts to is we want to find a basis for the null space of this matrix. So let's do that. Let's row reduce. So we row reduce to reduce our echelon form. And now we put the solution set in parametric vector form. You guys have done this a million times. The first row tells you x1 equals x3. The second row tells you x1 equals negative 3x3. And then the third column doesn't have a pivot. Sorry, this is x2. And the third column doesn't have a pivot, so x3 is a free variable. So x3 just equals whatever we want it to be, x3. So then um, a basis for the null space, you could say, is the span, or is just this one vector, 1, negative 3, 1. And so there we go. So that's our final answer. Basis for W perp is the vector 1, negative 3, 1. So that's our final answer. Let's just go through on like a high level, summarize what we did. We were given W as, we're, it was a subspace defined as all the vectors on this plane, x minus 3y plus c equals 0. And we want to find a basis for the orthogonal complement of W. So what do we do? First, we've got to find a basis for W. 
and through this parametrization, we get a basis for w. It has these two basis vectors. That should make sense, because since this is a plane, it's got to have two basis vectors. Okay, so we're good so far. Then to find a basis for w perp, we use the fact that w perp is the null space of the matrix whose rows are the basis vectors for w. And then, so we row reduce and we find the parametric vector form of the solution of the null space of this matrix. And then from that parametric, parametric vector form, we get the basis vector for w perp. And then in this case, it was just uh, one vector, one, negative three, one. That should make sense too, because remember up here, the fact that it's just one vector should make sense. Because up here we had w as a plane, so its orthogonal complement was a line. And so here we have w as a plane, it's the span of these two vectors, and w perp is just a line. It's the span of just one basis vector. So that's the process. I hope that that makes some sense. Um, and I will see you next time.